Yeah, the R-190 is your typical Rogers Majestic radio from the late 40s. This is a 1947 model. It features the usual styles you'd see in that era, uh, imposing dial, square box type of cabinet, nice wood veneer, a half decent uh, tabletop radio for a home, and that is a five tube radio, three bands, uh, with a phone input on the back, by the way, which was popular in those days. And uh, a half decent radio, it uses octal and loctal tubes. Loctal tubes were developed during the Second World War for the military because they, they actually clipped in and locked in place. They wouldn't fall out in rough use. They carried over into a lot of radios after the war. And uh, otherwise, other than that, it's a typical radio that uh, you would find the usual problems with uh, usual culprits or the capacitors and resistors that have failed over time. <coughs> in this one, the uh, filter capacitors were previously changed and they were still good, so I didn't change them. Um, other than that, uh, I had to change one too, which failed, and uh, strangely enough, it was the same tube that was rolling around in the radio when I got it, so I have a feeling that uh, the vibrations of rolling around damaged the tube and it just failed. But other than that, half decent radio, nice, nice piece. Starting to develop a great museum of antique radios. The radio restored is a Rogers Majestic System Model R190, vintage 1947. After we got the back off, it is obvious the only treasures in this one is the piles of dust. The inside of the back cover is partially covered with foil which acts as an antenna. It is actually called the plate antenna, which is common on Rogers radios made during the 40s and 50s. The front panel is entirely covered with grill cloth which is in good condition except for staining and fading. The dial plate is very good, a little faded too. The dial is held on by three very small screws. The speaker is in very good condition. Some of the pictures show the indicator mounted on the tuning mechanism, this is only a temporary setup to show where it goes. There was a lot of dust has settled on the tuning capacitor, as well as a few dried out spiders. The underneath of the chassis is in very good condition. Some work has been done in the past as we can see the hole where the filter capacitor was removed and underneath we see two tubular filter capacitors as replacements. I prefer not to remove capacitor cans if they cannot be replaced with similar ones, as the look of the radio suffers when something is seen to be missing. The cabinet finish is too scratched to salvage. There is no evidence of previous decals. The top is well worn. There is no sign of any loose panels or veneer, and no sign of damage due to dampness. After scraping and sanding the cabinet is looking good and ready for stain. The stain is very red, but when rubbed and then rubbed away it blends quite well with the walnut veneer and the radio will have an attractive reddish patina. A little meadow and walnut trim coat by brush to bring out the base trim contrast and it is ready for finish polyurethane. The stain needs to set up overnight. After the first coat of finish had set overnight, it is time for the decals. I could not find any pictures of the original radio showing decals, so I decided on using the names indicated on the schematic diagram. After the decal set for a while they are sealed with shellac. Next we move on to the grill cloth by carefully removing the name plate. The grill cloth is stained as well as faded. It will be a challenge to rejuvenate and a greater challenge to replace due to its molded nature. A little cleaning and washing was necessary to prepare it for spray stain. Now, the chassis. Some work was done in the past. Filter capacitors had been replaced, as well as a few other components. The tubes all test good and we see no obvious shorts in the B-plus circuitry, so we apply power via a temporary power cord. The radio sounds reasonable good, as little low on volume, and a little tinny. We have a temporary speaker hooked to it as well. 
we cannot tune much past the center portion of the band due to a tangle in one of the dial cords around the drive shaft. This radio uses two dial cords, one to drive the tuning capacitor and the other to move the dial indicator. The indicator dial cord was replaced at one time with what appears to be sewing thread which has broken and tangled around the shaft along with a wad of dust. We cleared that up and removed the dial indicator mechanism for ease of working on the underside of the chassis. We replaced a capacitor which has a swollen end and tests very leaky. We found a wrong component, a 2700 ohm resistor has been placed where there should be a 1200 ohm. We soldered the new resistor in place. After replacing a few more components the underside of the chassis looks good. Next we ran a test, and it sounds really good. There is lots of volume, and the tone is much improved. Suddenly it stopped working. We found a tube has failed. It is the rectifier. Once it is replaced our test continues and everything seems good. The grill cloth was dyed, but not as well as I had hoped. Overall it will not look too bad. It takes a couple hours for the dye to dry, so we replaced the indicator dial cord. This is actually a simple procedure and we are fortunate enough to have the dial stringing instructions next we moved on to the dial scale. It is a little dirty from 60 or more years of use. Then we need to clean the knobs and nameplate. After a good cleaning we notice the replacement knob is a little darker than the three originals, probably due to fading on the radio. When the dial scale is located on the grill it is starting to look very good. Now it's time to put the radio back together. The speaker board and grill need to be placed in the cabinet. The chassis is then attached to the speaker board. Next the dial indicator and dial plate are attached. After securing the front to the inside we soldered the speaker leads. We then put the back on and replaced the two worn out feet. The final pictures are the finished product. Thank you Kevin and Innovative.